I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, I felt privileged being there, your highness. Well, I've got an email here from a guy, and his biggest problem is that he's been dating this woman off and on for the past year. And what he tends to do is put her on a pedestal, kiss her ass a little too much, chase too much, act like he's not worthy of being with her, and he's also focused on the relationship. She pushes him away. She gives him lame excuses like, oh, well, the real reason I'm breaking up with you is I just have such a hard time getting a babysitter. If a woman is head over heels in love with you, she ain't going to say something like that, and she certainly is not going to break up with you. So I have a quote that I wrote, and then I'm going to go through his email and see what we can do to help him tweak his game so she falls in love and he can finally get off this fucking emotional roller coaster that he's on with her. Because you can imagine, I mean, obviously he really digs this girl. He's really into her. And then you just get rejected and then get back together a few months later. That's just not fun. And when I was still learning this stuff and struggling with it, that's what I was going through. Things looked like they were getting good and we were spending a lot of time together. And then I would get pushed away. She'd try to friend zone me. Then I'd let her go. And then a few weeks or a month or two later, we'd start dating again. It's just that waiting and doing nothing and waiting to hear from her and things progressing and learning to find that balance. And that's kind of where this guy is. He says he's been following me for a while, but he's only on his second read of the book. So obviously that's a big part of his problem is he doesn't know the fundamentals. And this is a, a case in point why you want to read the book 10 to 15 times is because if he had done that, the, the knowledge, the wisdom in the book would be instinctual at this point. Because when you don't know it well enough, you try to you tend to think too much, and you become your actions become robotic, and you start thinking in terms of what do I say? If I do this, will I get that? But when you understand the principles and the idea behind why people do what they do, and then you're able to actually see what they're doing and respond appropriately, it makes things a hell of a lot easier. And when you find that groove. It feels easy, it feels natural, and as a man, it allows you to be in your masculine energy and things come naturally. Women become totally predictable and that gives you a tremendous sense of peace, certainty, and well-being. And This allows you to focus 100% on your purpose and your mission in life instead of always in the back of your mind wondering what the hell is going on with your relationship or with your girl. So the quote says, people tend to act in ways that are consistent with who they view themselves to be, even if that view is not accurate. Our focus, self-perception, and self-talk determine what we say, how we say it, what we do, how people treat us, our physiology, and where we end up in life. You should think before you speak to ensure that what you are about to say or do portrays you in a positive, confident, determined, desirable, and valuable way. Why? Because people will treat you the way you view yourself. No one will ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. So as we go through his email, you'll see, I mean, he's just literally begging to get jerked around by the way he behaves, the way he treats her. The way he talks about her, like it was a, he spent time with her and her family, got introduced to everybody. He's like, I felt like it was, I was privileged to be there. Definitely putting her on a pedestal and instead of acting like an equal who deserved to be there. Why? Because he's awesome as well. I mean, I had a friend of mine. I was hanging out at his house and his wife – and he was pretty good, really good. He had a good, good marriage and – he really got women well and I, I remember his his wife was just kind of in a crappy mood. She was kind of bitchy. She was complaining about the music we were all listening to. A bunch of us were hanging around, having, having a party. There's probably, I don't know, 15 of us or so. Just hanging out one night, eating, watching some sports, shooting the shit, drinking some beers or whatever, having some wine. And she was complaining about it and then just would go over to this stereo and s switch it to something else. And he's like, I don't want to listen to that. And he was messing with her in a playful way and he would – he'd go over there and then he'd start putting on a song that really annoyed her, a song she didn't like. 
just for the whole purpose of annoying her to the point of it being ridiculous. And I remember we were talking about that and I, I asked him about it and he, his attitude was, it was so great what he said. He says, I live here too. In other words, it's not all about her. It's about give and take. But at times, the other, and especially like when it comes to women, they, when they sense a weakness, whether they realize it or not, it's like they find a chink in your armor and they're going to seek to exploit that. Because when a, when a man becomes unsure of himself, when he doesn't feel like he's worthy or not good enough, and he doubts what he brings to the table, women can sense that. They can pick up on that. And they start trying to jerk you around to see if you'll stand up for yourself. And if you do, they purr like a kitten and become very submissive. When you don't, then they become bitchy, push you away, start becoming confused about their feelings, become difficult, not enthusiastic to be, to make dates with you. It's just a bad way to go. So let's go through his email. He says, hi, Corey. I've watched your videos for a while and I'm on the second reading of your book. Well, you're definitely behind in the book reading, dude. You need to step up your game, homie. Great work. I need some help. I've been in a relationship with a girl for about seven months now. She has two lovely kids and I have one. We dated before that for about four months, but she ended it because of not being able to commit to dates with no babysitters for her kids. (laughs) That excuse is a big steaming pile of dog dung. That is that's the excuse that she gave you. And the average guy hears that and goes, Oh yeah, I get kid, that sounds reasonable. She's gonna get rid of the love of her life, the man she's been dreaming about since she was a little girl, because she can't find a babysitter. Boy, I bet she's trying real hard to find a good babysitter. Sounds really uh yeah. That sounds reasonable, totally. True story, no bull face lie. When we met up again after six months and started seeing each other again, this time it's better as her mom helps and I met the kids gradually. Well, if you're dating a woman that has children, they typically, at least at first, are going to be reserved, especially if the kids are young because they want to be answering questions like, Mommy, who's that guy? Is he your boyfriend? Are you guys going to get married? I mean, they don't want to answer questions like that, especially if you've only been out on a handful of dates. So typically, remember like what I talk about in the book, it's always better before you get to that point that you're exclusive, <clears throat> that she's asked you to be her boyfriend and you're in an exclusive relationship because that way she feels safe and comfortable. You've had time to build up a bond and obviously the kids don't get in the way because when you have kids around, especially small kids, you know, you think about the logistics of sex and, you know, I've dated women that had have had small kids and you go on trips, you're in the bathroom getting it on, you forget to lock the door and like literally there have been times you just like literally just pull their pants up. Hey, what are you guys doing in here? Oh, we're just uh, brushing our teeth. It's always interesting. It's funny how it's just like just in the nick of time that – you get your clothes back on or you make the bed or you clean clean all the mess up that's you know on the floor or whatever just funny that's a great experience having dating somebody that has kids or having kids of your own and just trying to get time alone for the two of you because especially small children they need so much attention they depend on you for everything so at least until you're in a committed relationship, it's always better to kind of delay those things so you can get to know each other. But it really depends on how – if a woman feels really safe and comfortable with you right away, she may introduce you to her kids sooner. It just really depends. She had been married to an abusive husband and I think the kids witnessed his crap and they don't really see him now. It was really great getting to know her and her kids and we were really into each other. So obviously somebody like this might have a little bit of emotional baggage and that might be hot and cold just because she might be a little messed up. After a while, she invited me to holiday with them this summer and invited me to stay over Christmas Eve night. That was cool. 
So obviously she's feeling very safe and comfortable with you at that point. I met, I met her parents and still wanted to, and they still wanted to, or she wanted to spend time with me right up until about two weeks ago. She also invited my daughter to come on holiday and bring a friend. I was very conscious of how significant all of those things were and I was privileged that she would include me in all those events. Does that really sound like a guy who views himself to be an equal? That tells that sounds like a guy who's got a woman on a pedestal, thinks like this is the ultimate woman, and then what happens is because you really want to be extra nice to her because you don't want to fuck things up because you really like her more than most women that you date, you put up with little slights or little insults or little little incidences of disrespect and you just brush them on under the rug in the interest of, hey, let's not rock the boat here because I don't want her to get mad or upset with me and then dump me and I wouldn't like that because I really like this girl because she's really special. But just like my buddy who was saying, I live here too, what about you? I mean if somebody's rude and disrespectful, you got to call them out on it. You got to ask them in a nice loving way, hey, don't talk to me like that. That's not cool. Or hey, I don't appreciate it when you say you're going to do X and instead you either don't do it or you blow it off. It's just not cool. I like people who say what they mean and mean what they say. Somebody who is dependable. I honestly thought those were signs that she was happy and wanted me to be with her. I can only judge her on her actions and what she said. Well, what's helpful is the interest, the attraction level table that's in the book. Because a woman who has attraction level of 9 or a 10 is going to be in love. She's going to be talking about marriage. She's going to be talking about moving in together. She's going to have her hands all over you, calling you out of the blue, telling you things like, I love you. I can't wait to see you again. The other night was so amazing. I tell all my girlfriends about you. I can't wait for us to be together more. Those are the kinds of things that you're going to see. Just because you're spending time around her and her family and her kids doesn't – I mean if she's not doing the things that are on the attraction level table, and that's part of the problem here. Didn't, didn't know that stuff. You read the book one time, one and a half times. There's no way you're going to pick up all that. So that's where it's helpful because when things happen, you can instantly look at her actions instead of going, yeah, there was something that about women do and they're in love and you don't remember. It's just too much detail. We only tend to retain about 8 to 10% of stuff when we hear it, when we listen, when we watch it or when we read it. Hence the 10 to 15 times. The more the better. And the sooner you get through it, the sooner you commit it to memory. Especially the people who are always going, oh, Corey, have you ever thought about doing an audio book? Well, if you really want to learn the material, the, the quickest way to do that instead of listening to me bloviate and read the book to you, read it to yourself and record it. Like when I've had presentations to do, like some companies they have sales presentations that are like an hour long and every word is scripted but you might not know that. And the way to learn those types of things is to take the whole script, say it to yourself and then play it back and listen to it and just walk around the house and say it to yourself as you're listening to it. That's the quickest way to, to do it. So he says difficulties have started as her son is making it more difficult for her to get time on her own or see me. Attraction level cuts through everything. If she's head over heels in love with you, I mean that's why you see women giving up their religion, their families, they give up their kids, they give up their careers. I mean in the last year we, we had, you had that woman breaking those two murderers out of prison and now she's ruined her life and she was going to have these guys apparently knock off her husband. And that particular dude, he's going to wait for her to get out of jail. She literally breaks these two murderers out of jail and had supposedly asked them to murder her husband. And this husband is going to wait around for her. I think he's got S-U-C-K-E-R tattooed right on his fucking forehead. It's a shame. But as people that don't seem to value themselves or see themselves as worthy, they put up with shit like that. They rationalize. Oh, well, we've been together for 20 years or 30 years. 
Dude, she broke some dudes out of jail and was going to have them come and kill you. She chickened out at the last minute, but he tells himself, well, well, she didn't go through it, so why would you want to stay married to somebody who's in jail and who literally was about to have people come and kill you? I mean, think about that. It's nuts. So he says, difficulties are, so her son likes me, but I think he is jealous and insecure by my presence. And I know this was stressing her as she didn't want to be telling me she couldn't see me and we couldn't get out much. Again, if she was head over heels in love with you, she wouldn't care. I mean, it might bother her and she might want to talk to you about it on, on your date. But at the end of the day, her she's more interested in seeing you than her son who's struggling with the fact she's with somebody besides daddy. She broke it off with a crappy story. The only reason she, you got dumped, dude, is because she's not in love with you. We spoke four days later and she apologized. They, did you speak because she reached out to you or more than likely you reached out to her because you're trying to force things? This is why even when people try to bullshit me or they try to embellish to make themselves look better, I can look through the whole context of the story or the email and look at what's said and what's done on both parts. And because I understand what people do and why they do it, it's easy to see right through the bullshit and see what's really going on and understand that behaviors are indicative of how they're showing up even though the person writing me the email may not have revealed mistakes that they've done. I can tell by the actions and the behavior that he's chasing too much, he's pursuing too much, he's trying to force things, he's focused on a relationship, he's focused on all these great things they have in common together, that he spends time with her kids and her family. and But you don't see anything that he talks about, about how much she says she loves him and cares about him and how affectionate she is and how she jumps into his arm arms and tears her clothes off and tears his clothes off when they get together and how she gives him great blowjobs whatever there's just none of that he's like coming up with all these logic and logical and reasonable things oh hey we spend lots of time together or, I, I spend time around her family as if that's indicative of everything she feels no i love yous no we're going to be together forever no talking about marriage or future it's like every turn in his email, he's focused on what can I do to get this girl to want to spend more time with me. That is somebody who doesn't view themselves as being worthy because remember, he says he's privileged to be around her. Therefore, he doesn't feel like he's worthy to be with her. Deep down, he doesn't feel like he measures up and he's not good enough. And because he doesn't feel like he's good enough, he thinks it's just a matter of time before she gets rid of me. So he thinks illusion of action, I gotta try extra hard to get her to fall in love. And what happens? She keeps blowing him off because for her there's no consequences. Scarcity creates value and there really is no scarcity on his part. And no amount of disrespect is gonna make him turn around and walk away. And just like I talk about in the book, in addition to the fact that the strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it, the only way a woman will, will really, truly, deeply love you and trust you as a man is if she knows that if she pushes you too far, you literally will walk away and never look back and be content with never speaking to her again. In other words, when that line in the sand is crossed, so to speak, not that you bitch out like our president did when he draws those imaginary lines in the sand. Because then when you do that, nobody takes you seriously. They think you're totally full of shit and you're a laughing stock. And people know how to whip your ass in a negotiation when you behave that way. But that's beside the point. She said she wanted to think things over. That's the kind of I'm confused. I'm not sure where I'm able to be. I don't know what my feelings are. That just means I'm not that into you. That's, what that, that's what's really going on there. I left it for four days again and she contacted me to meet up. I couldn't that day but she said she wanted to meet up for my birthday. She was also very flirty and affectionate in her text. Notice what happened. He left it for four days and did nothing. She reaches out to him. 
So he's doing things right. And then the average guy that's trying to implement my book but it's be, trying to be too strategic or technique if you will, using techniques, it's not flowing. And so therefore he'll leave it for four days. She reaches out and he thinks, oh, great. Now I can start pursuing again. They get together. They hang out. They have fun. They have great sex. And then instead of waiting to hear from her again, he starts reaching out to her thinking, hey, we just had this great night. Let me call her again because things were so good yesterday when we were together. If I make plans tomorrow, then she's kind of like in the vibe, in the zone, and she'll really want to see me and we can have the same kind of awesome night like we just did last night. It doesn't work that way because women need time and space away from you to wonder about you, to think about you, to be present with their feelings, to talk about their feelings with their girlfriends, their family members, people that are close to them. And in doing that, that causes them to feel your strength, to resist them, to wonder what you're doing. It causes them to like you more. It's like the analogy that I talk about in my book and in many videos where it's like sexual attraction. It's like putting a cake in the oven and you just wait for the cake to bake. But you can't, op- you can't be opening the do- oven door every couple of minutes going, is it done yet? Because it dissipates all the sexual anticipation. You have to let that build. And that's what he's not doing. He's not letting sexual anticipation build. And like I talk, if he knew the book better, he would know at this point he shouldn't be calling or texting this woman at all. Because every time he pursues her, it, the same thing happens. It gets nowhere. But again, if you don't think you're worthy, you're going to be trying to force things because you're in a perpetual state of fear. So he says, we went out for the day, had a great time. She brought presents for her kids or she bought presents for her kids and myself and we went back to her place and we had great sex. It's her idea why she reached out to you because he was able to hold out for four days without pursuing. And if you looked at it realistically, you'd think, wow, that was really easy. I didn't do nothing. I focused on my life. I, did, I took care of me. And she reaches out. She has a better attitude. She's more flexible, more eager to be around him. She's more touchy-feely, buying presents. Complete attitude change just because he left her alone. Remember, you must love in such a way that the person you love feels free. And he's not doing that consistently. That's why he's getting inconsistent pursuit from her. Then she dropped the line to say that she still thinks she can't see herself in a relationship. So that's what she's communicating. Hey, we had this really great time together, but slow your fucking roll and stop trying to lock me down to a commitment. That's in essence what she's trying to communicate. And when a woman says that, I just say, let's just have fun and see where it goes. Let's not worry about it. I don't have a crystal ball. Neither do you. If it's meant to be, it'll be. Give her one of those can kind of lines that everybody knows. I asked her what the last four days were all about and I got up and left. So instead of just being glad they had great sex, hanging out, having fun and hooking up, which is what I teach in the book, he focuses on drama. Why won't you spend time with me? Why don't you love me? Why don't you care about me? It's like a little boy that's upset with his mommy. Doesn't make, That's what I was talking about in the quote. You got to think about what you're going to say. How is this going to make you look? And if you knew the book, you'd know that women are like cats. They come and go. You can't take it personally. Sometimes they get bored of you. And the only way they're going to get unbored is just let them be, just like cats. If you ever watch cats, if, if you have friends that are cats, just completely ignore the cat. Don't look at it. Just leave it alone. And sure, soon enough, the little fucker will be jumping in your lap going, <laughs> purring away. It's, and women are the same. It's the... F- fucking strangest thing and when i figured that out when it's like when the light bulbs went off and the dots all got connected i was like oh that is so interesting why pursue when you can let them come to you as long as you do things properly to create the conditions so they'll feel safe and comfortable enough to do that i met with her two days later and challenged her about the mixed messages You must love in such a way that the person you love feels free. Do you think she's feeling free if he's challenging her? Now he's he's locking her down to a commitment. What's our relationship status? Where's this going? 
She's going to bounce from you every time you do this, dude. And she's dumping you for exactly the same reasons over and over and over again. She said she was going with the flow on that day and I said the mixed messages were coming from the day she texted me to meet up as there was nothing really by way of a reply. Bad way to go, dude. Again, this is why you read the book 10 to 15 times because the more you read it, it helps rewire your thinking and your thinking is still fucked. It's still the old way. If you keep doing what you've always done, you'll continue to get what you've always gotten. You really haven't modified your game very much. He says, I've gone no contact since. You should let her do 100% of the calling, texting, and pursuing from now on. Because every time you focus on locking her down, every time you try to get her to come see you, you get the exact opposite of what you're looking for. But if you just leave her the fuck alone and be happy that she reaches out when she does reach out and make a date then get off the phone, your dates will go great. You'll hang out. You'll have fun. You'll hook up. A jobs man. A jobs man. A man's job is to create an opportunity for sex to happen. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. That's why I put that simple formula together to keep it simple for us guys. Otherwise, we overcomplicate things. He says, I want to sort out this mess as I love her and she says she still loves me and wants us to work out, but I feel that she just wants to keep me dangling around. Any views would be greatly appreciated. Well, the only reason she's dangling you around is because you're inviting her to do that. Because you're acting needy, you're acting clingy, you're focused on where do we stand and that's the exact opposite of what you should be doing. At this point, let her do 100% of the calling, texting and pursuing from now on and then just make dates when you hear from her. As far as the babysitter stuff goes, she'll figure all that out. You don't have to do anything about that and stop trying to have a confrontation with her because that's never going to go anywhere. You're not going to be able to use logic and reason or forcefully lock her down to a commitment and have that end well for you that's just that's just nature and you've got all this history this past year every time you do it she bounces on you you got to see that by now so if you'd like to get my help personally go to my website click the products tab at the top of your screen and book any coaching option that works good for you and i shall talk to you soon 